January 6th just changed everything for Flight 12. SpaceX rolled out and installed the final SQD arm section at Pad 2 in a single day. B-19 and S-39 are built and ready. The infrastructure is complete. But here's what nobody expected. Neither vehicle has moved to testing yet, and the launch site sits in an eerie pause. Is SpaceX deliberately holding back for a coordinated, rapid-fire sequence? Or are we witnessing unexpected delays that could push Flight 12 into February? Let's dive right in. Let's talk about what actually happened on January 6th. Early morning, SpaceX rolled out a massive SQD arm extension toward Pad 2. This wasn't just any component. Observers immediately recognized it as the same unit prefabricated at the Sanchez site weeks ago, meaning SpaceX had been planning this move in complete silence. By late morning, a heavy lift crane positioned the extension with surgical precision, aligning it perfectly with the section installed last month. Here's where it gets interesting. That first section everyone watched go up in December, it was essentially a skeleton, a mechanical backbone providing structural support, but no actual fueling capability. The piece installed on the 6 is completely different. Dense piping networks, intricate valve systems, interface panels designed to mate directly with Starship's propellant connection points. This is the operational heart of the SQD the section that will actually transfer propellants into the vehicle. And this might be the final piece Pad 2 needed to become fully operational. If that assessment holds true, we're not looking at months of additional work. We're looking at weeks, maybe days, before Pad 2 enters integrated testing or even goes live. Think about what that means for SpaceX's launch cadence once both pads are running simultaneously. But here's the puzzle that's driving everyone crazy. B-19 sits complete at the production site. S-39 sits complete at the production site. Under normal circumstances, completed hardware moves immediately to Massey for cryogenic testing. That's the established pattern. Yet both vehicles remain exactly where they finished construction. Meanwhile, road closures keep getting announced. But when you look at what's actually moving, it's test tanks. Not flight hardware, test tanks going to Massey, coming back from Massey, getting repositioned. The actual Flight 12 stack? Stationary. So what's SpaceX waiting for? There are two possibilities here, and they lead to very different conclusions about the timeline. First possibility, SpaceX is still finalizing something at Massey, some infrastructure or test setup that needs completion before flight hardware can begin its test sequence. If that's the case, we're looking at delays nobody wants to talk about publicly. Second possibility, and this is where it gets fascinating, SpaceX is deliberately holding both vehicles for a coordinated, rapid sequence rollout. Complete all prep work first, then execute testing in a compressed timeline that minimizes idle time between stages. It's the difference between reactive scheduling and orchestrated precision. While B-19 and S-39 wait, other critical work just concluded at Massey. Earlier, SpaceX rolled a ship aftering section to the test site and mounted it onto test tank B-18.3. The purpose? Validating hot staging structural loads under extreme stress conditions. Hot staging creates forces that don't exist in conventional staging. You're igniting upper stage engines while the booster is still attached still producing thrust, still creating complex load paths through the separation interface. That ship aft section has to withstand those forces while supporting the entire mass of the upper stage. Around noon on January 6th, the crane returned. It lifted the ship aft section cleanly off B-18.3. No visible damage, no extended troubleshooting period, no secondary test setup. That's the signature of a successful test. SpaceX doesn't waste time celebrating. They just move to the next milestone. The fact that this hardware cleared the pad so quickly strongly suggests the hot staging validation met or exceeded objectives. 
Now, both the test aft section and B18.3 have served their purpose. They'll either leave Massey entirely or relocate within the area to clear space for what everyone's actually waiting for. B19 and S39 beginning their cryogenic test campaigns. While everyone focuses on vehicle movement, there's another factor that doesn't get enough attention, the Massey test platform itself. Right now, it's a relatively basic framework. We don't know when SpaceX plans to complete the remaining support structures or what additional systems need integration before full-scale testing begins. This matters because cryotesting isn't just about filling tanks and checking for leaks. It's about validating ground systems, propellant loading procedures, pressure control systems, all the infrastructure that has to work flawlessly before you can move to static fire. If that platform isn't ready, vehicles can't test, regardless of their completion status. Static fire tests are coming at both ends of Starbase. Raptor 3 engines will thunder at both the Massey site and the launch pad, validating recent upgrades to test infrastructure and demonstrating that the modifications perform as designed. Each firing generates data that feeds into the next phase of development, confirming that theoretical improvements translate into real-world performance. Now for the question everyone's asking. Can Flight 12 realistically launch before February? Here's how the math works if everything goes right. If B-19 or S-39 rolls during the first half of January, cryogenic testing could complete by mid-month. Because booster and ship test at different locations, some of this activity can happen in parallel, compressing the timeline. Successful cryo tests by the third week of January leave just days for data review, inspections, and final integration checks. A late January launch is technically possible. But let's be honest about what technically possible means at Starbase. It means no unexpected anomalies during cryotesting, no hardware modifications after test data review, no FAA licensing delays, no weather holds. Everything has to execute perfectly, first time, on schedule. <sighs> Skepticism is natural. This timeline is aggressive even by SpaceX standards. A single unexpected issue pushes the date into February or beyond. Yet we can't ignore SpaceX's track record of compressing timelines once all pieces align. B-19 itself proves this. That booster was completed in just 28 days, setting a new internal production record when many observers doubted it could be done that quickly. The point isn't blind optimism. The point is that conventional timeline expectations often don't apply at Starbase. SpaceX operates on a different cadence, with different risk tolerances and different decision-making speeds than traditional aerospace programs. While launch preparations dominate attention, Starbase continues evolving across multiple fronts. Gigabay construction rises steadily, with lower levels now clearly defined and construction towers approaching the height of the megabay offices. Once the main structure reaches full height, work shifts to interior systems, heavy equipment installations, assembly stands, work platforms, office spaces. This facility will transform Starship production from its current pace to true high-volume manufacturing. At Massey, newly built composite overwrap pressure vessels marked with distinctive red paint schemes have arrived for testing. These redesigned COPVs incorporate lessons learned from earlier incidents, built to handle higher pressures with improved safety margins. Thorough validation testing will be critical before these systems can be trusted in flight hardware. At Pad 1, the tank farm is being systematically dismantled. Several tanks have already been removed, potentially heading to Florida for repurposing at other SpaceX facilities. Even without active launches, Starbase never stops upgrading, never stops reconfiguring for the next phase of operations. Beyond Texas, significant developments emerge from Washington. Throughout late 2024, proposed budget cuts under the incoming administration threatened substantial reductions to NASA funding. The fiscal year 2026 proposal 
would have slashed NASA's budget to $18.8 billion, a 24% reduction, with science programs facing cuts as severe as 75%. On January 5th, Congress pushed back hard. The announced budget plan allocates $24.4 billion to NASA for fiscal year 2026, restoring funding to critical programs. Dragonfly, the mission to Titan, receives $500 million toward its 2028 launch target. The Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope gets $300 million to complete construction ahead of a potential fall 2025 launch. Mars' sample return, however, didn't receive restored funding. Technical challenges and escalating costs have made that program difficult to justify in the current fiscal environment. The budget plan still requires approval in both chambers, so final outcomes remain uncertain. But the message from Congress is clear. Deep cuts to space science won't pass without a fight. And on Mars itself, Curiosity continues its climb up Mount Sharp within Gale Crater, recently capturing a stunning panoramic view that spans two Martian days of changing light. The rover's tracks are visible winding up the slope, approaching the boxwork formation where mineral-rich ridges preserve evidence of ancient groundwater that once flowed through this region billions of years ago. So here's where we stand. Pad 2 just took a massive leap toward operational status with that SQD installation on January 6. B-19 and S-39 are built, tested components are clearing Massey, and the infrastructure is in place. Yet both flight vehicles remain motionless at the production site. That's either strategic planning or something nobody's talking about publicly. The late January timeline? Still alive but barely breathing. If hardware starts rolling in the next few days, if cryo tests go perfectly, if no surprises emerge during data review, Flight 12 could launch before February. That's a lot of ifs. But remember, this is the same company that built B-19 in 28 days when everyone said it couldn't be done. The reality is this. SpaceX doesn't move on conventional timelines. They compress. They adapt. They execute when the moment arrives. Whether that moment comes in late January or early February doesn't change the bigger picture. Starship is advancing faster than any rocket program in history, and we're watching it happen in real time. Meanwhile, Congress just rejected massive NASA budget cuts, Dragonfly to Titan is funded, and Curiosity keeps climbing Mount Sharp, reminding us that space exploration never stops even when launch dates shift. What do you think? Can Flight 12 still make January? Or are we looking at February? Drop your predictions in the comments. If you want to stay ahead of every Starship development as it happens, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for Space Update 24 hours. Like this video if you're ready to see Pad 2 finally roar to life. Thanks for watching and keep looking up.